Hello, everyone. Today, I would like to talk about how to build a Postgres high availability cluster with query load balancing on Kubernetes. And I'm Bo Pien. I'm working for SRE OSS in Japan, and I have been using Postgres since 2016. And currently, I focus on OSS technical support and project of construction and consulting. I'm also a PGP developer. I'm in charge of the PGP release management, documentation, bug fix, and the Postgres parser part of PGP. And so today, I would like to show you how to build a Postgres cluster on Kubernetes. So first, I will give you an overview of Kubernetes and describe what's the problems of running database cluster on Kubernetes. And also, I will introduce several Postgres operators for Kubernetes and how to use the operator to deploy the Postgres cluster with query load balancing. And also, I will introduce how to monitor the Postgres cluster on, operate, on Kubernetes. Notice more and more applications are being deployed in containers. In production environment, you need to manage and monitor the application containers to ensure there's no downtime. Now, if a container goes down, so you need to restart another one. Uh, just think about if you have a large number of containers, to manage such large number of containers, it's very complex and need many manual works. Kubernetes automates such manual processes. It provides an automated way to deploy, schedule, and scale your application containers. As well as the management of containers, Kubernetes also provides additional services. It offers the security, networking, and the storage orchestration service discovery and load balancing. The service is an important feature in Kubernetes. In Kubernetes, an application ports can be scaled up, scaled down, and can be, mailed, can be moved from one node to another one. So Kubernetes used the service to give a set of ports their own IP address and a single DNS name. So even if the application port is scaled or restarted, the DNS name doesn't change. So you don't need to change your application config files every time after Kubernetes restart a port or scaled a port. Or, or scaled a port. So your application route the traffic to service, and the service can load balance the traffic across the service member ports. And Kubernetes can check the health of the containers and the nodes. If the application fails to respond, and Kubernetes can automatically restart the port. The port. And Kubernetes can roll out and roll back. After a change to your application, if something goes wrong, the Kubernetes can go back to the previous deployed version. And the Kubernetes scheduler is in charge of the in charge of determining which node is the best, uh, which node is the most suitable for running port. And Kubernetes can store and manage the configuration and the sensitive information as secret, and such as the user's password, and tokens, and message keys. And more and more applications are being deployed in containers on Kubernetes. But you may think database won't work well in containers, because database is a stateful service. The 
the transactional databases rely on the state of data and its opposite of stateless services, such as the web applications and the web servers. And another reason, uh, as you know, when a database container is removed, the data will be lost. So if you want to run database in a container, a persistent storage is required to store the data. So because of these reasons, people think database won't work well in containers. Since Kubernetes 1.5, uh, stateful set, stateful set uh, workload API object is supported. The stateful set provides the solution for easily deploying and managing stateful applications like database. So it can manage the deployment and the scaling of a set of ports and the support for persistent storage. And the stateful set can guarantee the order when starting and stopping the ports. Uh, it will not create an auto port at once. And it will maintain a unique identity of ports. The, so the port name should be the stateful set name followed by an incremental number. So what's the problems of running database cluster on Kubernetes? As I described, also stateful site provides the solution for deploying Postgres database on Kubernetes. It cannot deploy and manage a database cluster. To deploy and manage the Postgres cluster requires more operation knowledge and it's very complex. For example, in a database cluster, because uh, you have to consider the difference between primary and standby. So replicas cannot be created as easily as web, uh, web applications or web servers. And also you have to think about how to perform the automated backup, how to perform failover and recovery, etc. So that's why we need to use specific database operators to help us deploy and manage Postgres clusters on Kubernetes. Next, I would like to introduce several Postgres operators. Now, what is an operator? An operator is a way of deploying and managing a Kubernetes application. Database operators can simplify the processes of deploying and managing database cluster. So, for example, it can perform the scaling, backup and restore, automatic failover, recovery, etc. As you know, there are several Postgres operators like Patroni, Crunchy Postgres operator, and KubeDB. However, uh, however, this Postgres operators don't provide the query load balancing capability. So user, users need to add the query distribution logic, logic to their application source code because only read query can be load balanced. And the read query must be sent to the primary server. Now, as you know, uh, pgpool, the software pgpool can understand Postgres backend and the front end protocol can relate the client, client queries to Postgres servers. So people can pass the client queries, can determine if it's a read query or read query. And the people will send the read query to primary server only and load balance the read query to any Postgres server. So I think we can use pgpool on Kubernetes to achieve query load balancing. So in this talk, uh, I will focus on the Postgres operator kubedb and the pgpool and introduce how to use kubedb to deploy a Postgres cluster and how to deploy pgpool to make it work with kubedb on Kubernetes. KubeDB is a um, production quality database 
operator on Kubernetes. It, pro, it supports for uh, the database Postgres, Elasticsearch, MySQL, MongoDB, Redis, and Memcached. KubeDB can help us easily build a Postgres streaming replication cluster on Kubernetes, and it is supports for taking periodic backups for Postgres database and restore from a backup. And KubeDB supports for PATR from VAR archive, automatic failover, and the build in monitoring feature. And PT Pool is a cluster management tool for Postgres. It supports for Postgres 6.4 or later. It's OSS and BSD license. And PT Pool has a rich set of features. Uh, it can pass the query, uh, client queries and send the read query to primary server and send the read queries to any Postgres server. It also has the in-memory query cache and the connection pooling feature. And PG pool checks the health check of backend servers, the, checks the health of backend servers periodically. If PG pool detects the backend failure, it will trigger automatic failover. And the watchdog is used to achieve high availability for PG pool. Online recovery is online recovery is a feature used to initial standby server. And however, if you use if you use um, Kubernetes environment, Kubernetes can check the health of backend container and restart the container or trigger an automatic failover. And the watchdog is not required because Kubernetes can detect the failure of pgpool port and restart pgpool port, PG port. And also, as I described, kubedb has recovery feature, so pgpool's online recovery feature is not required on Kubernetes. Uh, on Kubernetes, we need, only, we need to only enable the load balance, connection pooling, or the in-memory in query cache. Here is the architecture of Postgres cluster with pgpool. Now we can use kubedb to build a Postgres streaming replication cluster with one primary and one or more standby server. pgpool is deployed in a separate port. Uh, as I described, pgpool a pgpool relays a client queries to Postgres. So PGPU need to understand the Postgres backend connection information. And normally we add all the backend server connection information like the host name and the port, port number. We add all the information of the backend server to PGPU config file. Uh, but in but our Kubernetes environment Uh, Kubernetes provides uh, the service feature. It's an abstraction which defines a set of ports. And each service is, is assigned a unique IP address and a DNS name. So the traffic to the service can be load balanced, automatically load balanced across the service member port. So KubeDB will create two services for us. One is the primary service, and the one is the recovery service. So in pgpool configuration, uh, we don't need to add all the backend information. Um, we need just to uh, add the primary service and recovery service name. So even if the Postgres port is scaled or restarted, the service name won't change. 
So we don't need to change, uh, we don't need to modify the PG pool config file every time after the port is scaled or restarted. Also, we need to create a PG pool service. The users can send a query to PG pool service and the PG pool distributes the distributed the right query to primary server and load balance the select select uh, and load balance the read queries to primary service service or replica service and the replica service can load balance the query across the multiple standby servers Okay, next let's check the behavior when a failure occurs. The QBDB it can check the health of Postgres port constantly. When QBDB detects a failure, it will trigger a failover. As you can see here, if the primary goes down, one of the replica, one of the replica will become new primary and the old primary will be started as standby. And Kubernetes has auto-healing capability. So if Kubernetes detects the failure of pgpool port, and it will restart pgpool again, restart pgpool automatically. So next, I would like to describe how to deploy Postgres cluster on Kubernetes. First, I would like to introduce, uh, have, first I would like to use kubedb to deploy a Postgres streaming replication. So first you need to install the kubedb operator. Before installing, uh, you need to make sure you have a Kubernetes cluster and the Kube control is installed. Is installed. Here we use a separate namespace to install the latest version of KubeDB. And after installation, uh, you can see a running status PG, P, a KubeDB operator is created. So next, let's install hot standby Postgres. Here's the manifest to deploy Postgres. Uh, we use replica, here we specify the replica three to create three Postgres servers, one primary and two standby, two hot standby servers. And rep uh, replicas is used to specify the number of ports to be started. It's used to guarantee the availability of a specified number of ports. So if we specify replica three, so always three Postgres ports will be started. If one goes down, and another one will be restarted. And by default, uh, the random, a random password will be set to Postgres user. So if you want to change the Postgres user's password, you need to create a secret. A secret is used to store and manage the sensitive information, uh, such as the user's password. And the encoded data uh, need to be specified in a secret. So next, uh, just uh, apply the service and deployment. So after creating the Postgres resource, let's use kube control, kube control command to check the port details. You can see here three ports are created and they will be created se se sequentially in order from hot Postgres 0 to hot Postgres 2. 
When ports are being deleted, they are determined in reverse order. This hot Postgres 2 will be terminated first then. And you can see these three ports are in landing status. And hot Postgres 0 is the primary, and hot Postgres 1 and hot, hot Postgres 2 are standby servers. All the PG pool, uh, all the KubeDB also create two services. One is for the primary, hot Postgres is for primary, and hot Postgres replicas is for the standby service. Okay, next let's try to connect to Postgres. I will run PSQL in container. Uh, first, let's connect to primary container and then run PG start replication. As you can see in the result, there are two standby servers in streaming state. state. So next, let's check the standby containers. As you can see in the result, the standby is in recovery status. Well, next, let's connect to Postgres using service. Here we connect to primary service first and check the PG start replication. You can see the streaming, streaming replication cluster is created correctly. On the next, let's connect to standby, standby service and check the load balance. As you can see, the IP address it is it's different. So the service load balance, so the service can load balance the request across the two standby servers. So we have, we have deployed a Postgres cluster using KubeDB. So next, let's deploy pgpool. Here is the manifest to deploy pgpool. Uh, first, we specify replica one to create, create one pgpool port. And here we specify the Docker image and Kubernetes can define environment variables for container using in. When container is started, these environment variables are set to can be set to container and can be automatically set to PG pool config parameters of backend information. So we need to configure the backend service. So here we set the backend service name as environment variables. Here you can see the hot, hot Postgres is a primary service name and hot Postgres replicas is the standby service name. So even if, if, even if the failover occurs, the service name won't change. So the hot Postgres service name, it's always mapped to primary server. And the hot Postgres replicas, it's always mapped to standby servers. So with these parameter settings, pgpool can be started and work. So if you want to configure more pgpool parameters, there are two ways to configure parameters. The first is to set environment variables con to container. The un environment variables starting with pgpool params can be converted to pgpool configuration parameters and override the default configuration. Now, after starting a port, we can use pg control exit 
to connect to container and check all of the environmental variables. As you can see here, the service cluster IP and the service port are automatically set to container. And this uh, the environment variables which we specified in the deployment manifesto file. Now this environment variables can be convert to such PD pools configuration parameters. So the, se the second way to configure PG pool is to use config map. PG pool, uh, as you know, PG pool need to maintain the user's password in pool password file. So if you add a new database user, you need to add the user's password to pool password file every time. But it not, but it not easy to edit config file in containers. <clears throat> so the Kubernetes config map can store uh, pgpool config files like pgpool.conf, uh, pgp.conf, and pgpool password and poolhpa.conf. And the config files, config, the config files uh, configured in this config map uh, can be mount, can be mounted to the pgpool container. So if the config map, if you, if you update the config map, Kubernetes can synchronize the mounted config map. So the pgpool config maps, uh, the, so the pgpool config files can be updated automatically. So after applying these files, uh, as you can see, the pgpool port and the pgpool service can be created. And the pgpool port is in running status. And the pgpool service, the cluster IP is assigned to this service. So next, let's connect to pgpool service and check the query load balancing. As you can see, the results of show pool nodes at the initial status, the select the select count is zero. The select count is the select query counts issued to each backend. Then we run several times the select query. So after that, we connect to pgpool again. As you can see, the result of show pool mode command the selected counter increases. So as you can see, the PG pool can work well with KubeDB and can achieve query load balancing on Kubernetes. So next, I would like to talk about how to monitor Postgres cluster on Kubernetes. And also, Kubernetes provides a way to monitor the basic cluster status. It's not sufficient for practical cluster management. It's useful to export application metrics and uh, visualize them. Now we can use uh, Postgres exporter and the PG pool exporter to export the specific traffic via an HTTP, HTTP endpoint. And primitive servers can pull the real-time metrics and store the metrics in a database. And Prometheus is an open source monitoring tool. Uh, it provides advanced monitoring and alerting capability and with excellent Kubernetes integra integration. Now here's the architecture of cluster with monitor with monitoring feature. Now KubeDB has the has a built-in Prometheus feature. We can use this to we can use this built-in Prometheus feature to deploy a Postgres exporter in Postgres port. Uh, 
in each Postgres port. And a Postgres start service can be defined to all of the Postgres containers. And then we deploy a pgpool exporter in a separate container of pgpool port and expose a pgpool start service. To script um, this metrics, we need to deploy a um, promet server on Kubernetes. And this primitive server can pull the metric, can pull the metrics from the pgpool start service and the Postgres start service. Also, we can use Grafana to visualize the metrics. Next, I would like to introduce uh, pgpool exporter. Uh, pgpool exporter is a Prometheus exporter for pgpool metrics. It's uh, implemented in Go, and it can export the metrics such as the number of total child process and use the child process, and the status, the backend node status, replication delay, and the select the query counts. If you enable the in memory querying cache feature, you also can get such memory cache, query memory cache metrics. And next, let me describe how to deploy pgpool exporter and the primitive server. Now we deploy the pgpool exporter in the same port with pgpool container. Here's the deployment manifest. So to scrape metrics from pgpool, pgpool exporter needs the Postgres username and the Postgres username and the Postgres user's password. Here we set environment variable to set the secret information to container. And Prometheus has service discovery fun functionality. So in service, in this pgpool exporter service manifest, we define the annotations to allow Prometheus server to discover the pgpool exporter service endpoint automatically. As I described, Prometheus can be integrated with Kubernetes. It can discover the scraping target, scraping targets automatically use Kubernetes API. Here's the list of the available meta available meta levels, and here is the Prometheus config file to discover pgpool exporter annotation and set it as a script scraping target. Okay, next let's deploy the Prometheus server. Now we have defined um, config map for Prometheus, for Prometheus in the last slide uh, in this Prometheus config. So here we need to mount this config map to Prometheus server port. So after deploying the Prometheus server, so we can access it from the web browser. Uh, as you can see, the targets, here's the scraping targets. There are three Postgres servers and with one pgpool server. And also you can check the labels, uh, which is the um, which one is the primary server and the, which one is the standby server. So Prometheus collects the metrics periodically and stores the metrics in database. So it's possible to see the metrics and the graph of metrics. As for example, uh, here it's the replication delay graph 
uh, and the number of process numbers uh, collected, uh, collected from PGPU exporter. So I have described how to use KubeDB to how to use KubeDB and PGPU to deploy a Postgres cluster with query load balancing and how to monitor the Postgres cluster. So this solution can symbolize the process of deploying and managing Postgres cluster. And it has a rich set of features. It provides the backup, restore, uh, recovery, uh, automatic failover, monitoring, and the query load balancing features. And however, there are some limitations. Uh, for example, uh, KubeDB uh, don't support the latest version of Postgres. So the Postgres 12 is not yet supported. And the synchronous replication is not yet supported. So we expect uh, QBDB can add this support in the future. So about our uh, future work, uh, we would like to make PGPool more Kubernetes friendly. And for example, uh, because only one standby is visible to PGPool. So we have to think about how to set the configuration parameter, like the backend application name. So also, uh, we would like to enhance the show command and the PHP command to output more helpful uh, cluster state information. Also, the uh, PGPool exporter should be improved. Um, to expose more help of metrics and make it a support for custom queries. And KubeDB uh, has the logging, logging feature, provides the log logging feature, but you may want to monitor the Postgres log and analyze the Postgres log. So in the future, uh, you would like to think a way to collect the logs from Kubernetes and monitor the Postgres log. And for example, we can use the FluentD to collect the logs from Kubernetes cluster, and we can monitor, analyze the Postgres log, and monitor Postgres log uh, to monitor the Postgres activity by using PG Badger. Okay, next slide. At last, uh, I would like to summarize my presentation. Uh, I have, in this talk, I have given you an overview of Kubernetes and uh, described what's the problems of running database on Kubernetes. And I introduced several Postgres operators and introduced the how to use KubeDB and PGPU to deploy a Postgres high availability cluster with query load balancing. And I described uh, how to monitor the database cluster using Prometheus, Postgres exporter and PGPool exporter. Okay, next I will give you some useful links and the config, the config files uh, today we use the in this, and uh, today I use the in this presentation. You can find all the config files in uh, this link. And if you want to know more about PGPool and QBDB, you can visit this homepage. And you also, also you can find the Docker images uh, on Docker, Docker Hub. Okay, thank you. And I hope uh, my presentation can be useful to people who want to build a Postgres high availability cluster on Kubernetes and want to achieve query 
load balancing uh, on Kubernetes. Okay, thank you.